This training video is the first in a series of videos for getting started in Hyperlith. Simply run Hyperlith from your start menu and the GUI will appear. We're going to choose create a new simulation from this startup dialog and just hit OK. So here you have the main graphical user interface or GUI. You simply work from left to right setting up your simulation. Here you have the main tabs up here. The mask technology tab is where you de define your mask structure. It's not the pattern of the mask, but it's the structure. What type of mask is it? Is it a rigorous mask? Is it a thin mask model? What, how many layers are on it? Is it an EUV or DUV mask? This is all of the things that don't have anything to do with the pattern of the mask, just the structure and the model. For simplicity, we'll just stick with a chrome on glass Kirchhoff mask where the transmission of the glass is one and the transmission of the chrome is zero. A simple thin mask model. On the mask pattern tab is where you define your mask pattern. There are several pre-configured mask patterns. Staggered contacts, line ends, elbows, flash patterns, or of course you can make uh, a pattern from a GDS or a custom mask pattern right from polygons. Again, for simplicity, we're just going to use the simple line space pattern. Together, the mask technology and the mask pattern form the complete mask model. The next main tab is the stepper setup. This is where your imaging parameters for your stepper or scanner are set. Again, you have several pre-configured ones or you could make a custom one, but we'll just stay with the pre-configured ones. And we'll set our parameters. For example, the numerical aperture will say 1.35, which, and we'll click, we'll check the water immersion checkbox. So we have annular illumination from sigma 0.7 to sigma 0.9, 1.35 numerical aperture, and water immersion. The next tab is the resist model. For now, we'll just say no resist model. So over here, we have what we call the live view. The live view shows you what's going on with your setup, with your simulation. Here is your mask transmission. So again, we have a chrome on glass mask technology, and here we have a line space pattern. So here's our mask transmission, the magnitude and the phase. Here's our case space view. Here's our aerial image. Here's our bosungs, or our CD through focus for various thresholds of your aerial image. And here's our CD, 21. Back on our mask pattern, we have a metrology point. Measuring, it's saying that we want to measure the width of this line. And it's also saying that the line should be 65 nanometers. So on our FEM control tab, we're going to find our nominal threshold. We press this find nominal threshold button and that changes our threshold from 0.3 to 0.4708. That is the threshold that causes this measured simulated CD to be 65 nanometers. We can refresh our live view and we've got 65 here and our bosung looks now more reasonable. So then we can press the simulate button and it'll run the complete simulation. The results of the simulation come here on this tab, the data and results tab. For every simulation that we run, we'll have a tab as our output. 
and in the tab we have a tree of our results. Here we have a mask transmission function. We could plot that. Or we could plot our aerial images. In this case we have focus varying. And here's our aerial image through focus. We could plot them on a matrix plot here or we could plot them all on top of each other. There's through focus all on top of each other. We can look at contrast through focus. The best focus has the highest contrast. And we could look at CDs. Let's plot a bosung. Or we could plot a process window. And there's our process window. So to summarize, you work from left to right through the main tabs, setting up your mask structure, your mask pattern, your imaging parameters. You can find your nominal threshold here. You press the simulate button and your results come on the data and results tab. On the right side you have the live view which shows you your progress. If you need help on anything, you can either press F1 and that will give you help on whatever your current um, Uh, whatever your current sim uh, focused component is or you can press this question mark button and then you get a cursor with a little question mark and then you can get help on whatever you click on so there I've got help on resist in the next video we'll look at how you can use formulas and variables to set up multiple cases and run batches of simulations